After meeting the king in Freeside, we notice that he has a cybernetic dog for a pet. We can ask him about the dog by saying, where did you get that robot dog? I got Rex here from a salvager a few years ago. He was a little dinged up when I got him, but one of the followers fixed him right up. He doesn't seem very happy. He goes through spells like this from time to time. Is there something wrong with him? He's been acting peculiar for some time now. I took him to the followers and had him checked out, and they said his brain is bad or something. Can they do anything? No. They said they don't have the tools to help him. Is he going to be okay? For now. But they said eventually he's going to get worse. I don't know what to do. Can I help somehow? I don't know. Maybe. If you found a way to help my poor Rex here, I'd be much obliged. Your best bet will be to talk to Julie Farkas over at the old Mormon fort north of here. Maybe you'll have better luck than I did. With that, we start the quest, Nothing But a Hound Dog. Heading on over to the old Mormon fort, we find Julie Farkas and her unique hairdo walking around by the tents. The king said you could tell me more about his robotic dog. Rex? It breaks my heart every time I see him. He's such a good dog. The king brought him here for treatment then? Yes, a few months ago. We had to tell him there was nothing we could do. So you can't heal him? No. Rex's condition is way beyond anything we can handle. He requires brain surgery and some sophisticated cybernetics work, too. So there's no chance he'll get better? I didn't say that. While no one here has that kind of expertise, I do know of one man who might fit the bill. Do you know of anyone who could do all of that? There's an old scientist named Dr. Henry who reportedly specializes in this sort of procedure. He'd probably be your best bet. Last I heard, he was living up in Jacobstown, far to the northwest. Ah, good old Doc Henry. We can go back to the king to say, Julie Farkas said a man in Jacobstown can treat Rex. She said what? Why didn't she just say so when I was there? Actually, come to think of it, I was pretty angry when I went down there. I vaguely recall something about upending a few tables, maybe knocking out one of her doctors. Anyway, that's incredible news. Only thing is, there's too much going on around here for me to make a trip like that. And I need all of my guys just to keep things settled here. You seem to be awfully interested in my boy Rex here. And you've done some good work for me already. I'll tell you what. You promised to get Rexy here to that doctor, and I'll lend him to you. What do you say? Absolutely. I'll make sure that Rex gets better. I can't thank you enough. Now, there's a few things you should know about old Rex here, if you're going to be traveling together. First... He hates rats. Can't stand the things. Giant rats, mole rats, doesn't matter. He catches a whiff of one, and he's off like a shot after him. He's normally pretty obedient, but you might have to chase him some if he goes after one of the little varmints. Second, he doesn't like hats or the people wearing them. Don't ask. I have no idea why. Maybe because it rhymes with rats. That should be it, though. Other than the occasional bad spot when his brain starts hurting him, that is. But I'm hoping you will see to that. I wish you both luck. Take care of my Rex now, you hear? Rex, this is your new master. Protect her as you would me. With that, Rex joins our company and we get his search and mark perk. While Rex as a companion, unequipped chems, firearms, and ammunition within a short distance are highlighted when you zoom in the camera. Here we see the perk in effect, I turned off my light, and you can see the faint green outline around this bottle of booze. Similar to how you can tag scrap items in Fallout 4, and if you have the appropriate perk, see them highlighted in the world around you. Now the king said that Rex has a few peculiarities, and I wanted to test him out. So I brought Rex with me to a cave where I knew we would find a lot of rats, but despite what the king said, Rex was not that aggressive. If the rats didn't attack me, Rex was happy to leave them be. Now, of course, if the rats attacked me, Rex fought back and killed them pretty quickly, but I wouldn't say that he was more ferocious against rats than any other companion would be. But he certainly hates hats. I was wearing a helmet and he didn't seem to mind, but taking off the helmet and putting on a hat, the next time I talked with him... (sighs) Easy there, down boy. What's the matter with you, Rexy? Oh, that's right. You got a thing about people with hats. Well, cut that out or I'll turn you into a hat. Hey, it's okay. We're on the same side. Settle down. 
He had this exchange only once. After going through that dialogue tree with him, he no longer growled at my hats. Now, I read that he also growls when your companions wear a hat, but I had Cass with me and she has her cowboy hat on and he never seemed to notice. So I don't think that's true. Now, after we get him as a companion, we can have a conversation with him. Well, as much of a conversation as you can have with a dog. How are you feeling, boy? Don't worry, I'm still working on getting you fixed. Hey, come here, I want to take a closer look at you. We then have the option to examine three parts of his body. If we examine the painting of the bull on Rex's side, we notice that the paint, though weathered and fading, is still a recent addition to Rex's bodywork. Taking a closer look and it looks like a bull. A red bull. Does that mean that Rex was once part of the Legion? And on his rump, we see written, K-9 unit. Was Rex at one time a police dog? But if so, from where? If we choose to examine his brain case, we notice that Rex's brain looks sickly, and the gel in which it's contained doesn't look much better. And if we choose to examine his mechanical parts, we notice that his bodywork is battered, scorched, and scratched. It's remarkable that the biological part of him survived at all. Wow, well, looks like Rex has been through some stuff. This Legion Bull and the canine unit fascinate me. I wonder if we'll learn more about his backstory. But first, we need to get this guy fixed. So heading on over to Jacob's town, we can have a chat with Dr. Henry. Hey, Dr. Henry, something's wrong with my cyber dog. I was told to come to you. It's neural degradation. Biomed gel can only preserve a living brain for so long, so you'll need to find a replacement. I haven't left Jacob's town in years, but there was one woman in Novak, Gibson. I remember her living with a pack of hounds. Aside from her, I know that the fiends and Caesar's legion fight alongside dogs. There could be viable specimens among them, if you can get to them. So we have three options, to get a brain from the fiends, a brain from the legion, or to head on over to old lady Gibson. Ah, now we remember old Lady Gibson. We saw her at the Gibson Scrapyard, which was just north of Novak. She likes to sit on a big tire outside her garage with three of her trusty canine companions, Camillo, Basura, and Ray. But these are not the only three. Exploring her scrapyard, we find two more, Feel and Audaz. These are all Spanish words. Rey means king, basura means garbage, colmillo means fang, feel means bile, and audaz means bold or audacious. I think it's no coincidence that we bring the cybernetic dog belonging to the king of the kings to the scrapyard to get a new brain from Rey, which means king. Old Lady Gibson is an important person to meet when doing Ed E's quest. Her dialogue triggers one of the recordings in his personal quest, and she marks on your map the location of Helios 1. Hi there. I'm Old Lady Gibson, or so they tell me. I've got odds and ends for sale, and I'm pretty good at fixing things, too. Why do they call you Old Lady Gibson? Well, I'll give you a hint. They used to just call me Gibson. I hope you can figure out the rest. I don't mind, to be honest. Living long is a real accomplishment these days. Remains to be seen if I end up dying peaceful in my bed. She can repair our items, and her skill is pretty decent. She has a skill of 65, and her shop is all right. Of note, we can walk away with five cards to add to our caravan deck. Hey, Gibson, Dr. Henry sent me. I need a new brain for my cyber dog. Dr. Henry? Now there's a name I haven't heard in years. Hard to believe he's still alive. How did you meet Dr. Henry? He and I had joined up with the same caravan. Add in a lot of whiskey and, huh, well, let's just say we got to know each other. As for your request, it's uh, a bit ghoulish if you ask me, but Ray is pretty old and I'll probably have to put him down soon enough. As for the price for this favor, 700 caps sounds about right. Raised like family, and I've got other dogs to take care of. Now we can pay the 700 caps, or we can pass a 70 barter check to say, I'm offering Ray immortality of a sort. Are you really going to put a price on that? Fair enough. Here, Ray. Mama's got something for you. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! And she slaughters Ray and hands you Ray's brain. 
there's a big spot of blood on the door and wall behind her, and it just gushes into the air. Wow! Old Lady Gibson, that was, uh, that was brutal. Now we can find the next brain to fix Rex at the fort, which of course is occupied by the Legion. Now you all know that I've completely trashed my Caesar's Legion reputation, but there comes a moment in the primary quest when Caesar forgives you of everything you've done, allowing you access to the fort. Using this privilege, we can explore the place where we find a man named Antony standing next to a big hound. Outsiders are a rare sight at the fort. Step carefully around here and you might just leave alive. I'm Antony, master of the hounds. Where does the Legion get its dogs? We breed them mostly, but sometimes we get some good ones from Denver. That whole city is overrun with them. You train these dogs? Been doing it since I was a boy. The mongrels know to listen up when I start talking to them. Tell me about yourself. I've been around dogs all my life. They're my life. Always were. All the way back when I was a tribal. One of the hang dogs outside Denver. Dogs roamed that city. Our tribe made peace with them. Thought they were our spirit animals. Helped us hunt. Provided for us in some lean times. Then the Legion came. Good thing, too. Stronger now. Don't need those beliefs anymore. How did you end up joining the Legion? When the Legion showed up, we fought. Most tribes did. Hangdogs hung out longer than most. Broke us by throwing our dogs on the fire. So we gave up. Our elders couldn't bear the idea of our spirit animals burning in the afterlife. Kaisar was impressed enough to conscript us. Use our skills with dogs to join the Legion as hound masters. Hey, nice dog. Lupa. Yes, she's the mother of a lot of our best dogs. She's getting old, but she's still a tough old bitch. Aren't you, girl? Yeah. The mechanical dog you have with you. Where did you get it? Why do you want to know? I ask because Kaisar once had a similar pet, but it was lost during a battle. Oh, that would explain the painted bull on his side. Now we can lie and say, he just started following me one day. I have no idea where he came from. I see. That's very strange. Or we can tell him the truth and say, Rex, I picked him up in New Vegas. Even though we picked him up in Freeside. Does Freeside count as New Vegas? Oh, such things are common in Denver. But I didn't know that other cities had them as well. Hey, I noticed this aging hound next to you named Lupa. I could really use Lupa's brain to fix my cyber dog. Cyber dog? Like the ones I've seen up in Denver? I know what you're talking about. And it would make Lupa immortal, in a way. They have more cyber dogs in Denver? Not too common, but you still see him around. So, is that a yes? You give Lupa a worthy death in the arena. And her brain is yours. Don't let your guard down just because she's old, though. Oh, and standard arena rules still apply. You don't get to wear armor, and you get only a machete for a weapon. We have to fight Lupa in the ring. When we're ready, we can say, I'm ready to fight Lupa now. All right. You've been a good dog, Lupa. Die well, girl. We are stripped naked of all of our gear and given only a gladiator machete. Lupa charges and attacks. And even though my melee skill on this character is pretty decent, because my character had no armor on, I died a couple of times before I was finally successful. I looked up the meaning of the word Lupa and in Spanish it means magnifying glass, which doesn't make a lick of sense here. But I was thinking Spanish because all of the other dogs at Lady Gibson's scrapyard had Spanish names. But Lupa belongs to the Legion. The Legion are LARPing as Romans. The Romans came from Italy. Maybe Lupa has a different meaning in Italian, and indeed it does. Lupa in Italian means she-wolf. Which makes perfect sense because Italian is a romantic language. Romantic languages descended from Latin. The Romans spoke Latin, and in Latin, Lupa also means she-wolf. Incidentally, if we chose Ray's brain, we'd be giving Rex a brain with the same name that he has. Because Rex, in Latin, also means king. 
Once Lupa is dead, our equipment is returned to us and we can rip her brain from her corpse. Now Henry said another brain could be found with the fiends. This is another brain that we likely acquire pretty early in the game, especially if we've already done the Vault 3 quests. Deep in fiend territory, east of Vault 3, near to a Poseidon energy gas station, we find a bunch of parked caravans. On top of the caravans, a fiend raider named Violet has created a home for herself. She's infamous among the fiends, for she breeds and trains some of the most vicious hounds in the Mojave Wasteland. As we attack, the hounds charge us, one of whom is Violetta, named after her fearsome master. Once she's dead, we can rip her brain from her corpse, and then go on in and clear the other hounds for good measure. While exploring Violet's little camp here, we see lots of meat lying around, and inspecting it, we notice that it's human flesh. So going into this, we need to remember that Violetta has been raised eating human meat. Once done, we go back to Dr. Henry to tell him that we have a new brain for Rex. Very well. Show me what you brought so that I can analyze its potential. We now have to decide which brain to place in Rex's body. Each brain gives Rex different attributes. We can start with Lupa and say, I got a brain from Lupa, the mother of many Legion mongrels. Let's take a look. Exceptional synapse responses. Descended from some type of cattle dog, I imagine. If you want me to transplant this brain into Rex, he'll become more durable. Go ahead and transplant Lupa's brain into Rex. Have a seat. This will take a while. With that, Rex gains the Blood of the Legion perk. The note here says that it makes him harder to kill, but specifically, it gives Rex an additional 10 DT and 100 HP. If we choose this brain, Rex gets the following ending. With the transplant of Lupa's brain, Rex gained all of the donor's experiences traveling with the Legion. These melded well with his own memories of the Legion, and his new mind quickly adjusted to the myriad memories. Alternatively, we can say, I took down a fiend dog named Violetta. Big brain on this one. All right, let's see. Damn, heavy amounts of the chemicals used in the drug Turbo are present. Transplanting this brain will make Rex faster than he was before. Go ahead and use Violetta's brain. With that, Rex gains the unshakable tracker perk, increasing his movement speed. Specifically, it increases his movement speed by 50%. If we choose this brain, Rex gets the following ending. Revitalized by Violetta's brain, Rex eventually learned to balance the memories of his old life with Violetta's experiences among the brutal fiends. His mind had difficulty adjusting, but Rex eventually found peace with his new, more vicious self. And the final option is to say this brain is from Ray, one of Old Lady Gibson's dogs. All right, let's see here. Neural pathways look good. Definitely a breed of guard dog. If I transplant this brain into Rex, he'll be a bit more ferocious in his attacks. We can tell him to go on ahead, and Rex gains the Faithful Protector perk, which increases his attack damage. Specifically, it gives him plus 25 to attack damage. And if we choose this brain, Rex gets the following ending. After Ray's brain was transplanted into Rex's cybernetic body, it took Rex some time to adjust to the old scrapyard dog's memories. Eventually, Rex's mind settled peacefully, melding his own memories with that of long travels with old Lady Gibson. Rex has two more endings. If we never took Rex on as a companion and never completed his quest, he gets the following ending. Having never received a replacement brain, Rex finally succumbed to old age, abruptly shutting down forever one quiet morning. After two centuries of life and decades of service to humanity, Rex collapses and dies. And if for some reason we decided to attack the kings and in the process killed Rex, he gets this ending. He had survived police service in Colorado, the Great War, combat duty with the Legion, and being the companion of the king. But in the end, Rex finally succumbed to the horrors of the wasteland. Regardless of the brain we choose, we complete nothing but a hound dog, and we can go on over to Rex to see how he is. He doesn't have any different responses depending on the brain we choose. The only differences are his ending slides and the perk he gets. Well, he seems a bit perkier. How are you feeling, boy? So you're better? Good! 
I won't have to strip you for parts. Well, you're certainly looking better. Well, I'm glad to hear it. We can then choose to take a closer look at him, and we see a new option to inspect his brain case. Rex's new brain looks fresh and healthy, and indeed it flickers with electricity. Well, the ending slides told us a great deal about Rex. They say that he survived the Great War, which means Rex was serving as a police dog in Denver, Colorado, the day the bombs dropped. Denver, Colorado must have equipped their police force with cybernetic dogs, one of which was Rex. The process of turning a dog into a cybernetic dog must greatly increase their lifespan, so that even after the bombs dropped, these cybernetic dogs still roam Denver, Colorado. At some point, Caesar picked up Rex, likely when he was subduing Antony's tribe, whereupon Caesar brought Rex to the Mojave Wasteland. But then he lost Rex in a battle whereupon some salvager found him, fixed him up as best as he could, and then sold him to the king. Heading on over to the king, we can go up to his personal bedchamber to tell him the good news. Why, Rexy, you look all better, boy. Good as new. Did my Rexy get a new brain? He sure did. You're a man of your word, no doubt about it. I can't thank you enough. If you want, hold on to Rex for a little while longer. I'm sure he'd enjoy that. Should I leave you two alone? No, I'm just happy to see my pup back on his feet and happy. I can't thank you enough for this. Hopefully, he's been making himself useful as a way of paying you back. So you don't want me to give him back to you just yet? No, no, you can hold on to him for a little while longer, I think. You deserve that much at least for what you've done. All of the brains are great options, but I chose Violetta's brain. I think the movement speed is much more useful in combat, allowing him to move from enemy to enemy much quicker. I was testing him out on a big pack of death claws close to Vault 19, and it was a crazy battle. Because Rex was right up in there, I thought I might have tagged him a few times, so I ran on over to check on him, when all of a sudden... Huh? Rex, it's times like this I wish you could talk. Are you saying I should stab the next person I see? Is there a radioactive twister coming? Do you smell an ambush? Is it gonna rain? Did someone fall into a well? Oh, all right. Let's go check out that well, boy. And then we hear it. <laughs> the familiar wild wasteland sound. This event with Rex only happens if we have the wild wasteland trait. After talking with Rex, he adds a new location to our Pip-Boy. Checking it out right next to Fields Shack, we see a new icon called Jimmy's Well. Heading on over, we see a well right outside the shack. And accessing the grate, we appear at the bottom of the well with the mole rat. You're just in time for your ass whipping. At the bottom, we can loot a super stim pack, and we see a skeleton right next to a rawhide cowboy hat, two whole packs of BBs, and the unique weapon, the Ambeline Kid Limited Edition BB Gun. This gun is named after one of the characters in the 1948 John Wayne movie, The Three Godfathers. Now, at first glance, it may seem like a really boring weapon. It has the exact same damage, action point cost, attacks per second, and therefore DPS as a traditional BB gun. But the major difference is that this BB gun has a critical damage of 70. Compare that to the regular BB gun, which has a critical damage only of 4. Plus, it has a slightly higher critical chance multiplier, 1.5, compared to the BB guns, 1. Now, it does have a large spread. It requires a 0 in guns to be able to use it, a 1 in strength to be able to use it, and the damage is really low, making it a poor choice in everyday combat. But coupled with the appropriate perks, this weapon can be a devastating sneak attack weapon. With the better criticals perk, if you land a critical hit with this BB gun, you do 109 damage, which is just a little bit lower than the sniper rifle's 113. But if you have the perk, just lucky I'm alive, that damage gets a 125% increase, which will cause a critical attack from this BB gun to do 157 points of damage. If you attack from stealth, which gives you a 100% chance to land a 
a critical hit, and if you use aid or have other perks that improve your critical chance modifiers, such as finesse or using the True Police Stories skill magazine, it's completely possible to one-shot enemies with <laughs> this BB gun. Now, you don't have to have the Wild Wasteland trait to get this gun. If you don't have the trait, the gun simply appears in Field's shack, instead of at the bottom of the well. The only difference between the two versions of the gun is the one at the bottom of the well has 100 condition, whereas the one inside Field's shack appears at only 90 condition. Now, this entire well quest is, of course, a reference to Lassie, which was referred to in Fallout 2 as well. For a long time, people have laughed about the Lassie TV trope where a dog that can't speak runs to humans for help and is able to precisely communicate the danger where their help is needed. The irony is that not once in all of the episodes of Lassie did Timmy get stuck in a well. Now, in Lassie, Timmy got stuck in quite a few places, but never a well. However, there are two episodes of Lassie where Lassie goes to get help after somebody falls into a well. In one episode, little Timmy has to get rid of his pet crow because Gramps doesn't like it. One day, Gramps falls into a well after walking on some rickety boards. While he's still unconscious, the pet crow manages to find an old gold chain that used to belong to the grandpa, and he flies to the well, dropping the chain inside because... Thanks for finding my chain. All of a sudden, I wanted to be buried with it. Help! 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 The grandpa then begs the crow to get help. The crow flies off to find Lassie and somehow communicates to Lassie the situation. Lassie then runs to the well and Gramps tells Lassie, Get help, get help, you hear me? Help! Get something! Get anybody! And so Lassie, the mighty dog that she is, grabs an old hose, drops it down, and Gramps pulls himself up. At the very end of the episode, we see Gramps walking around with his new best friend perched on his hat. None other than Timmy's pet crow. What are you, what are you gawking at? Got my hand on crooked or something? Aww. <laughs> well, how about that? Anyway, despite Timmy never falling in the well, this classic TV trope has permeated culture, and this is what Obsidian was referring to with this little quest. And that is the full story of Rex, the cybernetic dog from Denver, Colorado. What are your thoughts on Rex? Do you use him in place of Ed E, or do you prefer to run with Ed E? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I've got a new shirt in the shop, folks. Suspender set to maximum stun. That's right, it's about time I had a shirt that referenced my show. The shirts come in a variety of colors. On the front, we have the quote, and on the back, you get my smiling face. You can even get a mug with my mug. <laughs> you can find a link in the description, or you can click here. Thanks for watching, everybody. I publish a new video six days a week on a wide range of topics spanning all of the games. If you want to make sure that you don't miss my next video, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. And if you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, with a brand new video.